So welcome to uh, Deerfield Select Board meeting, August 1st, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. Uh, at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, Main Street, uh, Main Meeting Room, 8 Conway Street, uh, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, this meeting will be recorded. Uh, if you come to a mic, for, ask any questions at all, please state your name and, and your residence. Um, so tonight we, we've got a really exciting night of interviewing two wonderful um, applicants for town administrator position. So um, Diana Schindler is our first applicant and would love to okay. come up and join um, us. Before we start, we a, a um, I do have to make an announcement. I have to recuse myself from the, any discussion and voting on this matter because the second candidate happens to be my brother-in-law. So um, I can't participate in this in any shape, way, or form. Uh, okay. So I um, will not be putting any bias on any parts of this proceeding so okay okay thank you very yep. much thank you david welcome thank you so i'll read a just a brief kind of thing here um so uh, welcome and congratulations and um and being selected as as a finalist for the deerfield uh town administrator position um we as a Board of Selectmen take great pride in our community and creating a welcoming environment for collaboration and knowledge sharing and growth in our workplace. Um, we're excited to have an opportunity to ask you some questions tonight to help, help us finalize our, our search for our next town administrator. Um, I want to thank our town administrator search committee, uh, Chief John Pachurik, uh, Accountant Brenda Hill, uh, Town Auditor Tom Scanlon, Finance Committee Chair uh, Skip Olmstead, uh, library trustee and uh, chair of our committee, Satu Zoller, and myself for putting two excellent candidates forward um, to this board for a final decision. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Um, so, I'll, we'll jump right in. So, um, welcome again, and uh, please uh, tell us and the residents a bit about yourself and what motivated you to apply for town administrator position. Okay. <clears throat> well, again, um, my name is Diana. I've been um, a town administrator for a little over 20 years in Massachusetts. I've worked for three other uh, communities that are similar in size and demographic, uh, two uh, more closely being Southampton and then the town of Orange. Um, I also spent some time in my career at uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and the Hampshire uh, Council of Governments. So I spent the other part of my career in regional government. Um, I have been, I started with you about uh, 19 months ago as your special projects coordinator. Yep. And during that time, I worked with Wendy Foxman here uh, doing that role. And I really uh, enjoyed doing that, uh, working on the projects, um, doing some grant work and getting some uh, projects completed that had been sitting for a little bit. Um, and so then and when I became the interim in February, obviously I continued that work and um, I really enjoy Deerfield. I think it's a great community. I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I have worked, I um, have always worked in communities where there's been, I've gone in and there, I'm either the first town administrator or I've been there when there has been some transition or some vacancy. So that is always kind of an exciting challenge to me. I enjoy, um, you know, co going in and trying to create that stability mm -hmm. and some more, um, you know, consistency to processes and things like that. So I, I feel there is a need for that here in Deerfield. I think there has been some transition in, in administration for uh, many years. Um, so that to me is a, a welcome challenge and so I'd like to continue with that thank you thank you um, Deerfield has has many great opportunities and challenges ahead um, what have been some of your greatest successes and challenges in the field um, you know in this field and how um, how did you deal with them mm -hmm. Um, I think my one of my greatest successes I feel when I got to Southampton one of my first charge uh, one of the first things that they set out to do was there had been a building project that had languished for about 10 years called the Larrabee it was a Larrabee school it was an old school that they wanted to turn into a town hall senior center and so for 10 years they had worked on it you know similar to how you're working on your sewer project trying to get debt exclusion votes trying to get votes couldn't get couldn't get it done um, after a decade they were ready the senior 
seniors, the seniors were located in Larrabee School, but the conditions were horrific. So it was really at the point where it was like renovate or detonate. That was right. the that was the call when I got there, like renovate or detonate. Um, so I'm really proud of the fact that I worked for two years um, consistently on that project. I got there, I formed a communications committee, which instantly got the project uh, more uh, public information. A lot of people were confused about things. Um, so we, we put together a communications committee, an unbiased group of people that just communicated out and liaisoned with uh, the building committee and the select board. Um, and within a couple years, we had the project voted. Um, we got a, a debt exclusion vote for it. We got the project, um, by the time in the five years that I was there, the project got built and I had moved into the new town building. So mm -hmm. I feel that wow. that's one of yeah. my, um, you know, I'm really Something proud of that proud success. Of. I worked really hard because Southampton, while they had some resources, were very, very conservative. They were very conservative in their spending. So it yeah. took a lot of a lot of education. We worked really hard with the senior community to do that as well. So I'm proud of my work with that. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, in the challenges, I think I, I've been in a community that was financially challenged. So that was very um, difficult. They're still facing those challenges today. Um, I think having great uh, people and resources and uh, uh, enthusiasm in a community, but not having the finances to, to really do anything to, to move forward is so difficult, is so challenging. So that was, a, um, that was really difficult for me to, to just see how much we couldn't, you know, how much good work we couldn't do. So uh, another reason why it's so exciting to be in Deerfield, because you have so many great resources, including financial resources mm -hmm. um, and human and otherwise. But um, so I think those... Um, you know, obviously I've been doing this for a long time. I've dealt with many challenging boards. I've dealt with over, you know, I probably have dealt with over a hundred boards and committees in my career. If, I mean, I can't even count. It's innumerable. But I've dealt with, um, when I was in regional government, I worked with boards of selectmen that weren't my boards that were, you know, so I yeah. had to try to get them to buy into services and programs and things like that. So that was very difficult. So, um, you know, I think those were some of the challenges. But Thank you. Know, you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, on this uh, same theme of challenges, uh, what do you believe are, th are the biggest or most challenging obstacles facing communities of our size, and what strategies would you employ to ultimately overcome them and improve services to the residents of Deerfield? I think that one of the biggest things about communities this size is you're sort of caught between this rural and urban, you know, place where your demand for services is uh, robust, that you have people that live here that want um, a high level of services, and yet you're still a rural community Try to manage to you know, pay for those services on, you know, still in a rural environment. Mm -hmm. um, while that's changing, um, you know, I, I think that's challenging. So that's similar to a lot of the small rural communities around you. I think Deerfield, I've spoke many times about, I feel diff Deerfield's pressures are unique. I feel you have a, a you know, a, a, a part of your tax base that is a, a nonprofit, a large nonprofit base. You have a minimal commercial industrial base. Um, and then in the middle, you have a lot of farm, you know, mm -hmm. farmers and people that have lived here for generations who want to stay and have their family stay here. And it's becoming, you know, they're sort of getting squeezed by those things. Meanwhile, education costs are going up, um, you know, those kinds of costs. And those are um, not, um, those aren't avoidable. Like the rural communities, declining enrollment, things like that are affecting education costs. Um, I think communities, you know, in your, uh, where you have your financial resources, you may get less money from the state. So I think, you know, those are some of the pressures that you're facing. You're going to have to try to balance that with looking at economic development, how to bring, how to, how to, you know, stabilize and increase the tax base, how to fund all of your projects that you want to fund over the next, you know, 10, 10 or 20 years. You have many projects you've mm. been talking about. So yes. I think that, I, th I think, again, you have the ability to, to do all of that, but it's just going to take some, some planning and some, um, you know, visioning and thinking ahead. Right. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, so considering um, in the course of the day, the town administrator could interact with the public, federal agencies, state officials, state regulators, um, select board, chair of committees, legal advisors, support staff, department heads, um, 
How do you ensure and guarantee all parties are communicating appropriately and accurately and on a timely basis? And um, let's see, so examples, uh, what methods have you used um, to effectively communicate with your board? Um, what methods have you <laughs> have have not worked well or other challenges? Sure. Yes. Well, I'm still working on that. Um, <laughs> obviously, I think one of the the most effective means of communication is email because you can have a written, you know, record of it, and it happens very quickly. Um, but I think sometimes. Um, you know, the other types of uh, communication methods must be, you know, you have, must call people and communicate with them in that respect. Um, I think I have been working, obviously, with you, Trevor, and we, and I just, we were talking recently, Carolyn, about communicating with the press and how, you know, to do that. So I think there's effective ways to do, um, you know, to do that kind of outreach. Um, I don't know that I can guarantee <laughs> that Please? all parties are going to feel effectively communicated with, um, but I do, I, I, I feel I'm a good communicator. I'm receptive to people telling me if they don't feel communicated with. I'm very open and direct with people. Um, so, I mean, that's... Those are all the methods of, I mean, I think I'm a, a fairly articulate oral communicator and in writing. Um, I've written a gazillion letters over the years and gazillion written documents. I've made public speeches. I've spoke at town meetings. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I think I've communicated in all those ways effectively. Thank you. Um, if selected for this position after six months on the job, what words would town employees, your peers, and commi uh, committee members use to describe your work ethic? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I I think that I I am I, I want to model um, that that work is important, but I do model. You know, I've come to in my life to model a, a work life balance, but I work. Um, I, I never, I always meet the deadlines. I want to model, um, you know, just being, you know, getting after all of the work. I expect, um, I, I'm not a micromanager, but I expect everybody to perform so that we can effectively move forward with whatever your priorities are. Um, so I hope that they would say, wow, I, maybe they would be like, wow, Diana, would she just leave me alone about that? <laughs> I don't know if that might be the case, but I don't, I really try to support the department heads. I feel like my role is to work with the people that, that you have empowered to be your department heads to carry out the, the whatever's in the best interest of the town, whatever you set out, and we agree with con through consensus building what that is. Um, and so I think I will, you know, I do put pressure on people to, to move things along, get things done, but hopefully they'll appreciate that I'm right there with them, willing to help them and support them in any way I can to get those, you know, to meet those objectives. Thank you. But I would be expect, you know, have some expectations like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, how would you facilitate and coordinate all departments, committees, and select board to work together as a team on projects and activities? A very similar, I guess, right. kind of question. Yes, but. yeah, so I've talked about this, I think, before as well. So mm -hmm. I had one department head meeting, and I'd love, you know, once I once things are more permanent and settled, obviously I would recommend your, your town administrator have regular department head meetings. So I think, again, that's the first line of communication for, for me to hear what's going on, you know, boots on the ground for department heads to communicate to the administration and, and vice versa, it's, a, it's mutual, mm -hmm. uh, to talk Talk about goals and objectives and priorities that that you set out and that through the administration we want to accomplish um, so I think department head meetings I I feel that we should have at least once a year it is so difficult I know to schedule mm -hmm. but we should have some type of all board or committee meeting to make sure again that we're all working on toward the same goals and objectives um, even some of the non town districts you know we've mm -hmm. talked about setting okay. up meetings with the water district and fire district I think at least administratively I'd love for you know to to meet with those people and and support them as well I know they're not the town government 
government, but they are a function of the town. And, um, you know, I think we should all be working collectively. So, I mean, those kinds of, those kinds of meetings, um, you know, I think that's what I would probably do, organize, uh, arrange meetings and... I think, I think we're really functions. concerned about, um, you know, the, the huge amount of projects we have coming forward. We have the sewer, we have all our town buildings, we have the library potentially. Right. We certainly have, you know, the town hall that needs to be renovated. You know, we are interested in complete streets. Yes. Um, the MVP program. I mean, there's just hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of projects. And I, I guess I'm drilling down a little bit more on not just a couple meetings, but how would you support us in making sure that people understand what we're facing, how do we prioritize stuff, mm -hmm. how do we effectively um, spend our every dollar um, towards, you know, what our priorities are. So in other words, we really need to get the community as stakeholders in that process so um, people feel not, um, I mean, they feel like their tax dollars are working effectively, I guess okay. is what I'm concerned about. I mean, yes. people don't mind paying taxes if they feel like there's real value and we're moving ahead. It's the, uh, I don't want to say waste, but it's the inefficiencies and the, um, we're not really tackling what we need to tackle and we're not building um, for the future. And I think if people feel committed f to the future, then I think people don't mind paying taxes as much. And that, you know, no one wants to pay taxes, but right. we need to pay, um, to be organized and so um, I guess I'm was looking for a little bit more right. information so, on that right I'll, so I I'll think I'll read this so that so it's an accurate question um, how do you plan to spearhead you know that work that she's explained so that um, so that lifts some of the burden oh, see, off the day-to-day -day plan I know yes. I, the other I didn't see side. that exam yep. I'm sorry <laughs> no I should have continued reading That's okay um, how do you plan to spearhead this work so that lift some of the burden of the day-to-day -day planning and coordinating off the select board I mean we yes. still obviously yes, will yes. Yes. spearhead this stuff but right. um, well one we can of the, only do so much right one of the things I think when you were when you were mentioning that I had created quite some time ago I started a spreadsheet of the projects and a couple months ago I brought out a list of all of the projects and we talked about prioritizing so I think one thing once if we could get through that process and that I think you saw that list I mean that is all your project or right. not even all of them but a good amount of projects on there I don't I think it was like it was a lot um, then I think once then we should get a document put together um, and and have that you know maybe put that on the website but something where it would have all of the project works that you know where the project initiated what the funding is we can have like a spreadsheet that shows you know the progress for the community and the stakeholders and hopefully that will help us stay in communication because to be honest you are a very active board and I am also on a day-to-day -day basis fairly busy doing a lot of different things and I think sometimes our things are crossing over mm -hmm. so I do want to figure out how you know we can communicate better how I can communicate to let you know and and for you to feel confident that you can lean into that that mm -hmm. it is going to get done and you don't still feel like you have to do that some of that is just trust mm -hmm. that you have to trust you know and I know that's sometimes hard because you guys have it been used hard. to doing it for a long time so mm -hmm. but I would try to communicate you know if if like I know you you've been working on a couple projects you know crossing over and you know maybe you and I like should have a regular communication time where we just go through our projects and say how we doing on MVP how we doing on hazard mitigation how we doing on this and just you know because we're both running in different directions so I would suggest a, a combination of all those things mm -hmm. I think we should do some written documentation get that out to the public and I think we should um, work together to find ways to communicate and then any way I can I can put that in writing or some system for you guys to to all know what's going on I, I would do that. Thank you. Um, I, can I just add something too? Oh, of course you One can. of the other things that I did mention in my, my first interview that I think, you know, I know that the town, I know that Brenda and Skip annually put together a financial projection based on current conditions. But the other thing that I do think, um, I know um, I had talked to David Nixon, and I think me and I had talked about this, but 
you know, 15 years ago when you first were got elected, you guys used to do like a five-year, you might have spearheaded it the first year, you wanted to do a, a projection, a five-year yes. projection of revenues and expenses, not just current conditions, but future possibilities, what revenues might look like, what expenses might look like if we did projects. So I definitely think that's something else that we should we should definitely get back to doing and try to try to at least forecast three three or five years out on both the revenues that we expect based on any changes we might consider um, for yeah. federal state, any, any aid, and then also for expenses and projects. I think that would be really useful. If we could go 10 years out, that would be ideal. Right. But I say start with three or five and mm -hmm. see where we can go. That's a good point. What support structure do you see as vital to carry out the duties of the town administrator? What qualities would you look for in an assistant that would complement your skills? Well, I think that um, the, you know, obviously we've had conversations about this, about the staffing in the office. In terms of the assistant, I mean, I think I, I do want to, I have to say, you know, give some some kudos to having Pat here, you know, with, with me in the office. Um, for, for the whole time I've been here, even when, even when I was assisting Wendy, there was still um, some, you know, some administrative and clerical staff, you know, staffing, and um, Pat, uh, you know, has jumped in and really filled the gap in, since Wendy's gone. Um, mm -hmm. She's taken over a lot of those um, of things. And I, she's, I feel um, very supportive, uh, supported. Um, I, you know, Carolyn mentioned something yesterday, um, you know, about my schedule, you know, so that's something we would have to discuss. I, um, ha you know, the, the hours, um, I'm here sometimes in the evening, so I can't always be here you know, in first thing and last thing all the time. It's um, a demanding so job. having an assistant who is here consistently and who is always responsive to me and who, you know, who, who is, um, you know, in that respect. And then I think obviously all the skills in the office, we need somebody who can, who can communicate with the public, who can, who can, um, you know, manage the multitasking of the office. It's a very busy office. So we need folks that can do that, that can communicate just as well as I can with, um, with the public stakeholders, anybody that comes in the office, boarding committee members, um, you know, I think all those things. Somebody who, um, I have some um, technology, but um, any technological support I can get in an assistant would be excellent. We need to keep moving, you know, progressing forward with technology right. and going paperless and things that we've talked about. So that's kind of where you know. I was drilling in, like what, what you know, everybody I, I have, everyone has. Um, deficiencies in some part of their skill base yes. and, um, and some yes. stuff we work on, but, but thinking of other people, how they compliment mm -hmm. you as far as what would they have for skills? What would you be looking for in that? Yes, I think that. I think the, you know, that tech technology would be somebody that would have that strength would be supportive. I think also somebody that I have in the time that I've been here have had to sit down a lot because I'm producing like every single thing that comes out of the office. I mean, Pat does the front office, mm -hmm. your stuff, but yep. I mean the administrative piece I've been doing. So once we have some additional staff, I, I, somebody needs to be able to sit there and produce those documents so that I can go and produce results, you know, right. that I can go out and do economic development and I can go meet with people and, and get, um, you know, just whatever, just get things moving. Not all the time, and obviously I need to produce too, but I think, no. you know, I need somebody that can, can stay and do that work while I go out and try to, um, you know, kind of make progress happen in different ways. Yep. Thank you. So, um, similar question, but what areas of growth do you need professional development in, or what, what areas do you think you would you would benefit from from growth? Yeah, I think um, you know, I I always I love the you know I went to that resilient leadership. I love the the support of just general leadership and how to continue to be you know to stay present and to stay engaged and not get negative and not get you know drawn down by those things when there's so many pressures coming at us from you know social pressures to just the day to day work and all of that. So I think that kind of stuff. But more specifically, I think, you know, I've, I've, I'm not 
frankly, uh, personally on social media. It has not been something that I've embraced. Um, so if that's something the town was interested in, I would want support on how to do that effectively, how to, how to use social media, you know, if the town is going to use it and not just the elected officials, you know, I would want, I think, support professional development on that would be, you know, how to commu communicate through social media effectively, things like that. Um, um, I think, you know, I don't know, any kind, anytime I can get any kind of training on, you know, grants and producing things like that, um, I, I like to stay updated on legal, um, that's constantly training, changing. Yeah. I think certainly personnel, but of course that's going to depend on, you know, what you feel comfortable with your administrator, you know, handling in those respects. Those mm -hmm. are still things I think, um, you know, the town needs to determine. Right. Like, how you're going to handle some of those things. Yep. So. Thank you. Um, how does the town administrator position in Deerfield contribute to your overall goals? <laughs> well, <clears throat> um, <laughs> where did that come from? I know this is a tough one. I mean, I. Deerfield has been like a gift to me. It's hard for me to say that, you know, it's hard. I'm going to try to get through this, but it's yeah. been like a gift because um, I, you know, I love this job. I love this career. Um, and at a time when I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it anymore because I had to make some decisions in my own life, um, I was able to come here to Deerfield and work with Wendy. And I feel like it's been, um, working with Wendy was, was a really such, I'd never had the opportunity to actually work alongside another town administrator. So, and, and having it be someone like Wendy was um, such an amazing um, experience as well. So, I mean, regardless of what happens, I feel very fulfilled um, by having been here in the time that I've already been here. Um, it obviously, you know, I live close by mm -hmm. and I do, you know, I have, um, I, I like to be closer to home for some yeah. things that are happening right now. So obviously Deerfield fits in perfectly like that. Um, other jobs are available out there, but they are farther for me, mm -hmm. you know, to have to drive. So I love the flexibility of Deerfield. I love that the staff has been so supportive. They know that I do work, but sometimes that I can't be here, you know, first thing. They've been so supportive of that. Um, so, and, and I feel in exchange, I have really given my very best. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not perfect, and I know that, you know, sometimes you can't please everybody, um, but I really feel like I have, um, you know, done the very best that I can. So I, I feel you. like it has, you know, it has helped, it's furthered me along in my evolution as a town administrator as well. So thank okay. you. Sure, thank you. Um, in Deer, Deerfield currently, we, as you know, we have a, a flat fee system for our town council. Um, how do you see yourself working with town council? Um, is it a close relationship or only call when you have a problem or... You know, how do you how do you foresee working with town council? Um, actually, I've been I all of the contracts I do send to town council. Any anything that needs legal review, I instantly send. As far as I haven't, um, I I do feel that I have a fairly good handle on mass general law. I've been you know looking at it for over you know 20 years. So I I try I. I will minimally uh, or, or try to not use town council for research or anything that I feel that I can uncover. But if there's any questions about, um, you know, if you have any questions about an opinion, um, mm -hmm. you know, definitely I would go to town council. But I haven't, I, I don't, um, you know, I, I haven't just been calling them, you know, right. I, I really only call them for specific things. Um, you know, that are in need of legal review and mostly the things that you ask, except for a few things that have come up with department heads and things that would be, um, you know, expected. Right. So, so what, what's your opinion of the flat fee? I think, um, you know, for the amount right now, um, I think if we didn't if we, if my expectation of what we would use over this next year would be correct, then I would ask for that to be lowered again because it did go up this year because we had a little more use last year. Um, but I feel that we could bring that use back down, and so I would ask for it to come back. But I, I think the flat fee is a, an excellent, um, an excellent 
engagement that you have with council and that you've negotiated a flat fee I think is is excellent and you get meetings you know for that you get um, you know good engagement for that so I think it's a it's a great arrangement in terms okay. of that so do you have any questions for us is there anything um, that we missed or should have asked anything that you want to ask us? <laughs> well I guess so um, so David has recused himself. Yes. I'm going to step away and you're going to have another interview. Are you, what is your plan then from that point forward? Our plan Can I is ask? to tonight to, de to deliberate an open session and hopefully make a decision moving forward. Okay. Okay. All right. This um, has really been a long process. We just need to get moving. Yeah. Make yeah. a decision. Okay. No, I, I don't have any further questions. I, you know, think I've had, I feel like I've had a fairly long interview. I don't mean this last half hour. <laughs> you mean the last six months. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. How Welcome. How are you? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, come on up. So welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Trevor. Good to see you too. And I'll read a, a quick statement and then we can introduce ourselves. Okay. Um, I'll start with introduce, uh, introductions. I'm Trevor McDaniel, chair of the Deerfield Select Board. I'm Carolyn Ness. Hi, nice Carolyn. Nice to meet you. And you are? I'm Mike Lipinski. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, this, this meeting is being recorded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just read a brief statement. So welcome and congratulations on being selected as a finalist for the Deerfield Town Administrator position. We as, the select board of, uh, we as the Board of Select Board take uh, great pride in our community in, in creating a welcoming environment for collaboration and knowledge sharing and growth in our workplace. Um, we are excited to have an opportunity to ask you some questions tonight to help us finalize our search for our next town administrator. Um, I want to thank our town administrator search committee, uh, Chief John Paturic, uh, accountant, um, town accountant uh, Brenda Hill, town auditor Tim, uh, Tom Scanlon, Finance Committee Chair uh, Skip Olmsted, Library uh, Trustee and Chair of Art Committee uh, Satu Zoller and myself uh, for putting together two excellent candidates um, forward for the for the board uh, for a final decision tonight. So, welcome again. Thank um, you. Let me provide you with. Uh. So welcome again, and um, please tell us uh, and the residents a bit about yourself and what motivated you to apply for the town administrator position. Uh, so again, my name is Michael Pinsky. I was born and raised in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, lifelong resident there until about 2010 uh, when I moved to Philadelphia for about 15 years. Uh, coming back for personal reasons, um, I saw that there was an opening here for a town administrator position and the uh, qualifications seemed to fit uh, for me as far as my knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, to lead a local government. Um, and I love this town. I love Northampton. I love this area. Yeah. It's beautiful out there. And uh, that's in a nutshell. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, so Deerfield has many great opportunities and challenges ahead. Um, what have been some of your greatest successes and challenges in this, in this field, um, and, and how did you deal with them? Right, so when I led, I led a local government in Upper Gwinnett, uh, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, uh, one of the greatest challenges we had is we owned and operated our own sewer plant, uh, and we were also a customer of another utility. Um, while I was there, I was tasked with uh, leading a project that would have diverted the flow from the, uh, our customer plant over to us so we could gain more water, gain more uh, customers, and have local control of our, our utility. Um, that project is moving forward now. Unfortunately, I 
didn't see it through fruition before I left, but um, very interesting in how you had to deal with regulatory agencies, uh, the DEP in, in Pennsylvania, and I'm sure there's a similar mm -hmm. agency, yep. I know there is, in Massachusetts, uh, and how you move those projects forward uh, is, is, is a big, it's a big job, uh, mm -hmm. and it needs someone that has knowledge, and I know that Deerfield has a project coming up that is uh, um, going to replace a clarifier that unfortunately yep. failed, yep. and uh, I think I would be able to lead that project uh, with a lot of um, forthcoming and, and, and ability and to do the task. So, I'm sorry if I'm a little nervous. This oh, you. <laughs> it's not live, so you're good. Yeah, good. <laughs> Just us in the room, no worries. Thank you. No problem at all. Um, so, um, on the same theme of challenges, uh, what do you believe are the, are the biggest or, or most challenging obstacles facing communities of our size? Right. And what strategies would you employ to ultimately overcome them to improve the re uh, services to the residents of Deerfield? So from what I understand about Deerfield, it's a, it's a small community, but it's a big family, mm -hmm. right? So yep. um, people know each other, uh, and developing personal relationships and being able to uh, navigate difficult relationships, I think, is one of the, uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard mm -hmm. to do, yep. uh, and it takes some patience and um, ability to understand what uh, local government can do mm -hmm. and what they can't do. So people come with you with challenges in their life um, and you want to be able to address those challenges, mm -hmm. help them if you can, for God's sakes, let's help people. And, but if not, um, find ways that they can navigate the system, the state system or whatever, uh, to, to find what they're looking for. Uh, I think in a small community, it's people need help, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's usually what they're coming for when they come in the door, Sure. right? They want help with something or, and to have people staffed here that can address their problems. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to motivate a staff to be able to do that uh, is also a challenge. So you want to have people that... Um, understand and want to deal with people on a regular basis because that's for a local government that's what you're doing mm -hmm. you're dealing with people yeah uh, you're allocating resources as respectfully and responsibly as you can uh, and uh, but but really most importantly I think it's uh, having a personal relationship with the community the business community mm -hmm. uh, the board yeah. um, is really what drives my uh, focus okay Thank you. Um, con uh, considering in the course of the day, um, the town administrator could interact with the public, federal agencies, state officials, state regulators, the select board, chair of the committees, um, legal advisors, support staff, and department heads. Um, really everybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> one shot. Um, how do you ensure um, guarantee all parties are communicating appropriately and accurately and on a timely basis? So my uh, experience as being a, a town administrator, town manager, was that uh, with a the board, there was five members in my community, but there's three here, uh, that um, everyone got the same information. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a, a disconnect between members. Uh, there's obviously selective interests uh, and those can be conveyed to me, uh, but being able to navigate uh, that information, get it back out to everybody is the most important thing. So everybody's on the same page. They know what's going on. Um, communication is obviously ideal uh, for uh, communicating with the board. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you can't get a hold of people. Mm -hmm. People have, in as a a volunteer board, uh, you're all busy, you yes. have jobs, uh, you do other things. Uh, so the way I handled it there was to just keep in constant contact with, with my board members. Even if it was something trivial that happened uh, that maybe they didn't need to know about, I 
absolutely communicated that back to them just so they were aware because right. somebody could walk up to them in the street or the supermarket and, oh, did you hear about that? Especially if it's a, if it's a, an employee mm -hmm. or a situation like that. Yeah. Um, you have to just keep the open lines of communication, keep people informed. Uh, and especially, I just want to drive home the point that everybody should have the same information. There shouldn't be any uh, disconnect as Absolutely. far as the members of the board on what's going on. Um, so right. that's, yep. that's what I'm thinking. So um, just kind of following up on that, what are your best forms of communication? What do you do? You, uh, first email, text? Yeah, phone. so I what, think that your... um, if the board has emails accounts, mm -hmm that you're connected to on your phone. That's pretty easy to navigate and look at. And text messages sometimes are a little, uh, you know, you can, I believe that email is the best form of communication because you could write some, a paragraph or two mm -hmm. to, uh, to convey the message that you're trying to accomplish. And also a phone call. Like people that don't talk to each other anymore is that's, I mean, I have three daughters, and <laughs> it's like everyone's on their tablet, and people need to talk to each other and listen. Yep. Um, I think a phone call probably is is optimal. Okay. Thank you. Um, if selected for this position, after six months on the job, what words would town employees, your peers, and committee members use to describe your work ethic? Uh, I think I think I get along with people very well, um, and I respect people, and that's just based on my upbringing. Um, you know, coming to work every day is a challenge, and it can be a challenge on certain days for some people, and a challenge not for some people. But uh, being a leader here, I would just encourage everyone to communicate with each other in the office. If someone's having a hard time, I I really support flexibility in the workday. I think that's really important for people with families. Um, so, and as far as the residents here are concerned, uh, I'm, I would always be open and always available for anybody. A meeting can be scheduled at any time uh, as long as, you know, the timetables work up. So uh, I think that would, people want to, uh, it's, one of the things I did in Upper Gwinnett was when anybody that came into the office, you had to just pay attention to them and treat them with respect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people can come in with a bad attitude, right? So how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. you, uh, you stop, you take a breath, <laughs> you listen, you make sure you're prepared with an answer, uh, and you, you treat them with respect because who knows what they're going through, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Their permit expired, they need a new permit. Uh, you know, something happened on their street that they're frustrated about. Uh, I think listening and uh, dealing with people with respect is, is one of the most important things you can do. Um, so after six months, I would think that people would look at me and be like, I like him. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, how would you facilitate and coordinate all departments, committees, and select board to work together as a team on projects and activities. Explanation here. Um, Deerfield has many, many major projects coming forward to work on. The sewer system upgrades, um, MB, MVP grants for culvert replacement, and long-term plan as it relates to our buildings, i.e. senior center, church, library, town hall space. Um, how do you plan to spearhead this work so that lifts some of the burden um, off the day-to-day, -day, burden of the, of the day-to-day -day planning and coordination off the select board? That's a long one, but... Yes, uh, it is. <laughs> I, if you look at my resume, and I think I've conveyed this to you, Trevor, in the previous interview, I do have ex uh, a lot of experience in project management, um, so that I've, uh, I did talk about the sewer project that I was involved in, but I also worked on the big dig which was uh, a huge fundamental training experience for me in my youth, uh, just getting out of college. And uh, that project was um, amazing, it was expensive, mm -hmm. it was dirty, but uh, I think the end result was a, was a great advantage for the city of Boston. So um, uh, 
to, to relieve people of uh, their duties, I'm not quite sure. Could, could you elaborate more on so that? What I'm, don't... what I'm saying is, um, I guess with the transition that's happened in this town since my several years of being on the board, right. um, our, our select board has gone through um, staffing issues. Yep. Um, so we have tended to take, we're a very active board anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're very involved. We care a lot about this community. Um, we have projects that, reasons why we ran for election and trying to move different priorities forward. Um, the, the amount of work that it takes to do this job right. is eye-opening to me. It's I considerable, yes. I had no idea how much um, actual time <laughs> it was going to take, right. uh, how many different hats you wear. Um, if you want to be an effective leader, mm -hmm. um, you, you can certainly just do your time. But if you ever expect to get anything done, it's an immense amount of work. Absolutely. And, um, what I would like to see, what I would love to do as a select board member and a leader of the town is more 30,000 foot, 20,000 foot vision mm -hmm. versus um, actually doing the work of organizing a open house at a, at a sewer committee, at a sewer treatment plant. Right. And, and I don't want to have to do the everyday work. You won't. But I want <laughs> to be able to do um, the bigger vision, the yes. bigger explanation, Absolutely. the bigger time, spend time really thinking about and working with our community to move projects forward, but not actually making the phone call to make right. sure there's food available there to set up. So thank you for taking the time to explain that. Uh, yeah, you need help, mm -hmm. and I can definitely help you. Um, I have the, the experience to manage day-to-day -day stuff that you don't need to deal with. So uh, I, would, I would be embarrassed to have you have to make a call to somebody to organize a community event. That's, that's my job and the people that work under me. So um, uh, the fact that that's happened here in the past, uh, I don't know why, but um, I think I'm pretty professional. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know what I'm doing, and I know what needs to be done in a, in a especially a small local government. Mine was a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. not that much bigger, but um, unique experiences, uh, and I believe that I can definitely relieve some of the stress you may be under uh, to deal with little details as an elected official. Uh, where I, I mean, that's what you're paying somebody like me for. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yep. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, what support structure do you see as vital to carry out your duties as a town administrator? What qualities would you look for in an assistant that would complement your skills? And what I mean by this is everybody has deficiencies in their skill set. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're looking to staff the office, because you'll have that opportunity if you right. move forward. What would you look for in an assistant um, that would complement you? So as, as an assistant, I would want to find someone with talent, someone that um, has experience or has drive and energy to, to lead a local government. Uh, I would want to find someone that I can mentor, uh, someone that uh, is willing to be mentored, um, is energetic, that has, you know, the passion to come into work and perform public service. Because, you know, the one thing about working for a local government and uh, or any type of government entity is uh, it's not Wall Street, right? So you have to have a dedication to public service. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that uh, you're here to help people. Uh, that's what people want. Um, and uh, my main focus would be to train the staff uh, in, in ways to, like I said before, the customer service is huge. Mm -hmm. Like if someone comes in and the, you don't have the answer, don't send them away, please. Find, find the answer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I would want a staff that can be responsive to that and that understands uh, you're working for a local government. You're not this isn't Walmart or, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to demean any of these organizations, but it's like you, you need 
uh, to understand and have a dedication to public service and have that uh, instilled in you or understand and be educated about what that takes. Thank you. Um, what areas of, of growth do you need professional development in? I need to take the suit off because I'm so hot take and your sweaty. Coat off. <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is Deerfield. You can take your, your coat off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. Well. So, a couple of things as far as professional development is uh, there's an organization. It's the International City Management Association, ICMA. Uh, they run a great program for professional development for uh, local government managers. Uh, they have a yearly conference that's very educational. It's usually held in, uh, in a larger city. Um, and then for, as far as my staff is concerned, I think there's resources out there in the, uh, the Massachusetts Municipal Association yep. has good resources They're to train. Yep. Uh, We're involved in that. Right, good. So um, anybody that needs training wants it, I think. So uh, if they don't, I think you need to motivate them to want it. So I would encourage all staff to uh, constantly improve and uh, do continuous uh, education so that they're up to date on what the local regulations are, what's going on in the cities uh, and towns nearby. Um, I would definitely, I would participate, of course, in, man in the MMA and the local, uh, in the uh, monthly meetings that they have. Um, but absolutely, even going down to the a secretary just hired out of high school, maybe, I would really encourage that person to, to learn mm -hmm. and to continue to learn and take, take advantage of the local universities. I mean, my God, we're in the Pioneer Valley and there's mm -hmm. tons of opportunities uh, to get an education. Although it may be expensive, I would, I would hope that the board would be um, uh, supportive of at least helping out with that type of uh, uh, education. Are there, um, are there any areas of your professional development um, that you foresee needing help? Um, you know, I know you spent a lot of your career in New Jersey and in, if I have that right? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yep. And then, um, how, you know, are you, are you up to date on mass procurement laws? Do you, do you have, um, you know, you're up to date on I on have all done the research, Trevor, on... Um, on you know, procurement laws and what it takes to, to I know you, that you're a member of the Franklin COG and, mm -hmm. um, and I think that it, the laws across states are very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's rare that, and Pennsylvania was a commonwealth as well as Massachusetts, so some of the same antiquated things that you have to deal with and, and navigate because of that uh, are the same. Uh, so, um, and I would just read and learn. <laughs> I mean, immediately. If I, the one thing I don't want to be is embarrassed. I don't want to uh, come in here uh, if if you ask me to and embarrass anybody, mm -hmm. especially myself. So I try to speak intelligently, um, and, and uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll find it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um. How does the town administrator position in Deerfield contribute to your overall goals? Um, it would be great to get this job and come back and work in a community uh, near where I grew up and lived. Um, just traveling up here from Northampton on Route 5, it was like I, I used to have a horrific commute. Uh, coming up here on that road was it was magnificent. It was really great. Um, and one of the things with day-to-day -day, uh, jobs and, and anybody that has to go to work every day, the commute uh, would be excellent. And um, I think living in a place where I know people uh, is, is important. 
-hmm. I think having those ties to a community uh, is important. Um, uh, professionally, I believe, um, as you can see from my resume, I haven't worked since November. Mm -hmm. So this would get me back uh, leading a government in Massachusetts where I'm going to live and, mm -hmm. and put down roots. Um, so professionally, and, and I believe that this is uh, an ideal opportunity, um, especially because of what I know about what's going on in town, and I really think I can help you with those issues. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, in, in Deerfield, currently we have a flat fee uh, system for our town, uh, town council. Um, how, how do you see yourself working with town council, and is, um, is a close relationship um, is it a close relationship or only, you know, call when you have a problem? I think I spelled council wrong, so it's <laughs> legal. So. Um, it's a Can smaller firm. It's not um, the, you know, the big firm that handles like a third of the communities in Massachusetts. Right. So, but there, there are three different lawyers in there. There's our main lawyer, Lisa, and then we have... Adam, who has tend to be our land use lawyer, and then we have a labor, labor lawyer, Kate, in that organization. So and you you pay them based on just monthly their we have a hourly rate. We right? well we used to, um, and and lately in the last several years we've we've negotiated a flat fee service for them to cut our costs a little bit. So they come out. They'll do um, quarterly meetings. Um, Visit, visit us here. Of course, they're always available on the phone to us, but right. instead of an hourly phone call, mm -hmm. hourly charge right. right now, not to say that's going to continue, but that's how it is right now. I'm so, just curious what your experience is working with, with uh, legal, you know, how in-depth it was. So legal is very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience had been uh, that uh, staff was not allowed to call the lawyer Mm -hmm. unless you had authorization from the department head or the administrator. Um, that's, a, that's a tricky question. Uh, sometimes you really need good legal advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can really help you through making uh, a wrong decision, right? Well, this was sort of preventative. I right. mean, the reason why we went to the monthly fee was to so that we had more opportunity to call and be preventative ultimately than wait until there was a real problem and then call them. Right, understood. Um, I would think I would work with whatever structure the board, you know, it's up to you guys how you, how you want to pay the lawyers. Um, and I would work within those confines. Uh, I, a lot of times you can do personal research uh, on issues that will help you make a decision and not have to call, pick up the phone and call the lawyer. Um, and that may inform you better and cheaper than calling a lawyer. Uh, my experience had been that I did that at times. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a free card on picking up the phone and calling them, uh, that gets a little bit addictive to people because They'll just pick up the phone and call the lawyer, right? And he'll give them the answer. That problem's over. Uh, so I would work with, within whatever confines the, the town uh, sets as far as uh, legal advice. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you have any questions for us? Is there anything we've missed or something we should have asked or anything that you'd like to ask us? Uh, I wonder uh, what your impression of me is. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's a good question <laughs> because I don't know you very well. Um, so, and this is a bit of a dance trying to get to understand somebody and yep. we're interviewing two people. And, right. Um, and uh, I would say you're dedicated and um, obviously prepared, present well. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm still, you know... Um, looking for depth as far as, you know, where, you know, depth of experience you've had, right. where you think you'll lead, the, lead this town, yep. um, what you think are, are some of the major, you know, issues that are addressing us, how you, 
you know, um, how you'll work collaborat collaboratively with mm -hmm. all the different department heads. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of challenge here and there's a lot of great opportunity right. ahead. And it's, um, this position's needing um, some leadership to kind of move that in the right direction mm -hmm. and um, take a little bit of weight off of what we've been dealing with for a bit right. and allow us to really advocate in the community for what we really want to get done. Right. Well, but there's an immense important. amount of work. This is a very, very busy small town. Yeah. Um, it's mind blowing how much actually goes on here. I, I, who am I to compare? I've never worked in another town. But right. It's my first uh, hooray at this. But it, I, from everybody I've talked to in that position, mm -hmm. um, it, there's a lot, a lot going on, more right. than meets the eye. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I understand the complexity of the three schools that are here and mm -hmm. the tax structure and the resources that aren't available and should be. And um, one of the things I would want to do at first off is meet the staff, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, get acquainted with them and then go out and meet everybody else right. and let them know who I am. Uh, let them know some ideas that I've talked to the board about that you can convey to me to bring back. I, I also want to stress that it's, um, I really feel as a, uh, in, in this position, I report to you all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't make decisions uh, that I wasn't comfortable with uh, or conversations or anything without making sure that you're comfortable with it. Uh, that's important. I think that's one of the things I was taught um, about, uh, I have my master's of public administration and uh, one of the things they teach you there and you read books all the time, right, uh, is uh, you need to have a, develop the relationship with the board first, mm -hmm. right? So get to know me, get comfortable with me. Uh, our lines of communication should be open. Uh, however you like to communicate is fine. I'm up, you know, I'm, I just want you to understand that I, I respect that elected officials, um, that higher administrator uh, need to have trust in that person that things don't go awry, mm -hmm. right? Just like you said, yeah. uh, you need help, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want any, like, I don't ever want to be embarrassed here in front of anybody and I definitely don't want you guys <laughs> to ever be embarrassed because of me so mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's important I'm sorry if I'm not getting into detail about day-to-day -day stuff mm -hmm. but I think um, professionally I think overall uh, having a professional manager in this town is going to help you out immensely mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to allow you to have faith uh, that things are getting done and you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, volunteering like you do is very admirable and uh, uh, I think that's what the local government manager is, is there to do. Thank you. Anything you wanna add? Um, well, um, I guess I'm kind of blown away. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Oh, you're um, welcome. I, you match my motivation. The only reason I'm here is because I really want to make a difference. And right. I love my community. Yep. Um, I, I'm very appreciative of your engineering background because we have just hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of projects. Right. Mil Multi-millions, really. I'll help you with that. I definitely will. And, and there's um, ways to get resources. And I, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I, but, I just... Uh, there's ways to take on that huge burden of doing these projects and how we're going to pay for it, how we're going to deal with the public, how we're going to do this and that. And I've, I really have a lot of experience in that. Well, and um, I, like Trevor, we're, we're really involved uh, and uh, we, we, we are generally even tempered. You're, you're lucky there's well, I don't know how your relationship is with your brother-in-law, but right. the three of us are even-tempered per people, and we just want to get stuff done. Right. And there's not really egos involved in yep. anything, and um, so, and we and we really care. So, um, 
I, I feel that's really important, but I have to say, like Trevor, I'm just really getting tired of the schlupping and the everyday little stuff, yeah. setting up meetings, you know, making sure people show up and, you know, just it's the little details. That really shouldn't be. For yeah, us that shouldn't to be, be handling yeah. is like, um, you know, we're, I'm, I'm ready to step back a little bit and, and make sure, you know, that we're getting money for projects that we're involved in, you know, I mean, I, I'm involved in a lot, a lot of committees, but the benefit to Deerfield is that, you know, I try to bring money in or connections that will, you know, ease some of the projects that we have or mm -hmm. whatever and, and build relationships with regulators so that we're not harassed and, you know, whatever. Right. But, uh, you know, to be tied down and just, calling around and making pe sure people are showed up and yeah. following up on the details to make sure that things get filed on time and meetings get posted. And I mean, it's really, it's kind of a drag. Yeah, that's, that absolutely is it. <laughs> I'm sorry that that happened here. Well, and, and it, and it is embarrassing. I have to say when we have to cancel, you know, meetings that town meeting, town wide meetings, not right. just our own board meetings and, um, so I, I've gotten frustrated. Yeah. So um, I'm, I can I'm tell ready you to that move ahead. My, my experience with, you know, I was responsible for posting the zoning hearing board. The people under me were responsible for that. But as far as uh, making sure that the day-to-day -day operations of the government function, and that's, it's really, as far as I'm concerned, that's not a big deal. That's actually just what you do. You come in, you make sure you have a system in place where if, you, if you're coming up to a deadline for advertisement or whatever, you get an alert on your phone and it gets done. Uh, you just have uh, fail safes put in place for a system and a program. And I think that's one of the things I, I want to do is install a different, install my own program here. And um, that, that could be challenging. Uh, especially given that I'm a new face and people have been here a long time. Um, but I think it's important that uh, in making their jobs easier is what I can do, right? So you don't have those stressors on people uh, where they're going to miss deadlines or not advertise a meeting uh, and just put in very simple methods to, to make sure that the, especially the day-to-day -day stuff runs appropriately and responsibly. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate Thank you. it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too.